Let's do some derivatives of more complicated looking functions. Let's start off with the rational exponents. Remember what rational means? Rational is a fraction, so something that can be written as a fraction. So for example, um, something like this one, like a square root of x. I want to remind you how we can rewrite that. Now this can be rewritten as a rational exponent. We can rewrite it, I don't know if you knew this, but it's 1 over 2. So this is x to the power of 1 over 2. That's the same thing as a square root. It's a square root because it's technically a little 2 here. We're just lazy. We don't tend to write the 2 there. We call it a square root, so it's 1 over 2. Well, then if you have a cube root, can you guess what that would be then? It would be x to the power of 1 over 3, and so on. 4 root is 1 over 4, and so on. n root is 1 over n. Maybe I'll write that down to generalize it. So the nth root of x then is just x to the power of 1 over n. These are some nice things to remember. Hmm, maybe I'll put a little square around them. So this here is something that's uh, good to know because we're going to use this idea now. So let me show you something kind of cool with this. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this one. Notice this one right here, pretty easy, pretty easy. Uh-oh. And then we're going to do it at f prime of 1. So that's our goal here. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. So first, I'm going to rewrite this to be more calculus friendly because I want everything in terms of exponents. The first two are fine, so I'm going to rewrite f of x. So 2x cubed, there's no problem with that one. That one looks good. Minus 4x, that one also looks good. It's this one that's the problem, so I'm going to rewrite it as an exponent, as a rational exponent. So this is the same thing as 1 over 2 the exponent here. Now I can do f prime of x. So let me find that. So I'll do f prime of x. Let's do that. So that's the next thing to do. Let's go ahead and figure that out. So what's the derivative of 2x cubed? Do you remember what happens here? The 3 comes in front. So 3 times 2 is 6 times x to the power of, and let's see, 3 minus 1 is 2. There we go. Boom. Now it's like there's a little 1 right now. So 1 times minus 4 is minus 4 times x to the power of, well, 1 minus 1 is 0, technically. I will figure that out in a second. Here comes a weird one. So the 1 half comes in front here, so we have a 1 half times x. Now what's 1 half minus 1? Maybe you don't remember that, so let's look at this. We have to have 1 half minus 1. Well, I can do this as a common denominator. I can say 1 half minus, I have to get this over 2. So 2 halves. Do you see that? Because this has to be 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1. So 1 half minus 2 halves is a, say, uh, let's see, that gives me minus 1 half. That's where I'm going to get this number right here, which is going to be minus 1 half. Not obvious. This only came because you did this minus 1. All right, let's fix this up a little bit just to get it to look a little bit nicer. Mm, so I'll say f prime of x, let's see here now, equals... I'll just try to fix it up so I can use it. So 6x squared. Now anything to the power of 0 is just 1, so it'll just be minus 4 times 1. That's just a 1 here. Uh, let's see, plus. Now there's a 1 over 2. Those are still there. This x to the minus 1 half. Well, remember what a negative exponent means? It means it's on the bottom. So it turns out it's 2 times x to the 1 half. And I can further rewrite it because I could say that, hey, hey, hold on. I know what I can do with that. Um, remember what something to the 1 half is? That's a square root. So I'm going to say plus 1 over 2 times square root of x. So this is what happened to it. So this is my, let's see here, I could say that this is my derivative at any point. But now I want it at x equals 1. So I'm going to make x equal 1 now. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I have f primed at 1 is going to be 6 times 1 squared, let's see, minus 4, plus 1 over 2 times square root of 1. Well, what's the square root of 1? It's just 1. So that's kind of nice. So it's, let's see, 1 squared here is 1, 1 times 6 is just 6, so 6 minus 4. And let's see, plus 1 over 2 times square root of 1, which is just 1, so it's just 1 half. So that gives me, let's see, 6 minus 4 is just 2, so 2 plus a half. Well, i got to get a common denominator, so what's that? That's uh, 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2. That gives me 5 over 2. So finally, my final answer is f primed of 1 equals 5 over 2. Phew! Now, 
Could you have done this with a calculator? Well, it depends on you know what you're allowed to use and stuff, but let me show you how you could, if you wanted to, do this with a calculator. But again, the goal was to show you how to do it by hand, right? That was the goal. But if you want to use a calculator, you actually could. Let me just show you here. I'll do the graph of this thing right here. So two times, uh, I gotta do x to the power of three. I'll keep going here, minus four times x, all that plus square root of x. I'll do that graph. That's kind of a mess. And then I'm going to ask my calculator to analyze and give me the derivative at x equals 1. And look, I get 2.5 is my gradient. And guess what? 5 over 2 is 2.5. Hooray! It works. So we did it by hand, and that was the important thing. Now, luckily for you, there is a table of derivatives here. You don't have to memorize these ones. These are on your formula booklet, which is awesome. There's just a bunch of them here. That's why I like this one here. <laughs> it's from Parks and Recreation. <laughs> well, this one isn't. This one just made a meme on top of that picture, but there you go. So what's the derivative of sine? Derivative of sine is cos of x. Derivative of cos is not quite sine x. It's a minus sine x. And this, again, you don't have to memorize. You look these up. e to the x is really fun because it's e to the x. This is a function where it is its own derivative. In other words, the... At, at some certain x value, the gradient of this function is going to equal the same thing as its y value. It's, it's kind of, well, it's unique. So what I mean by this is, watch, what if I go here, I do a new page, I'll do a graph, and I'll do e to the x. Let me just do that one. So e to the x. So there's the function itself, okay? Now what I'm going to try to do is graph. Um, let's see here. I'll do this right here, template. I'll graph the derivative. So I'll do derivative of x of, let's see, variables, I want f2 of x. Let's graph it here. Look at that. It's the only function where its derivative maps right onto itself. Isn't that kind of cool? No other functions do that. The other functions are all kind of wacky and do weird things. It's kind of special for that. Um, and the natural log of x is 1 over x. So these you don't have to memorize, you look them up. And these, luckily, are on your formula booklet. So this is just a simple act of looking them up and you can figure them out. So for right now at least, well, all we'll do is we'll just concentrate on simple versions of these. So let's look at this here. Find dy dx of this big mess. Well, let's go ahead and do that. So dy dx, because that's just like saying the derivative, so dy dx equals, let's see here. What's the derivative of four times e to the x? Well, it's gonna be, let's see, derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so just a four in front, just four e to the x. It was the same thing, nothing changed. Now this th uh, 3x squared, that one happens, something happens there. The 2 comes in front, 2 times 3 is 6, so it comes 6x to the power of 2 minus 1 is just 1. So there we go. How about this one? We have minus 2. Now what's the derivative of cos x? Derivative of cos x is minus sine x. Gotta be very careful with your minuses. We had a minus in front to begin with, and now we got another one here. Now we'll say plus, and what's the derivative of natural log of x? It's just 1 over x. See how simple that was? So finally, we're going to be done here. We're just going to fix it all up. So we'll say it's 4e to the x. That was awesome, right? This one was ez. Pardon my horrible joke. Because e to the x just becomes e to the x. Um, okay, plus 6x. And we're just going to say 6x. We won't put the 1 here. And a minus 2 times minus is a plus. So it's plus 2 sine x. And now we can say plus 1 over x. There we go. So this is our entire uh, derivative here, we're done. So to see how, hopefully you'll find this wasn't so, so bad at all. You just have to look up your derivatives. But be very careful though when you have rational exponents. Oh, sorry, rational, uh, yeah, actually. So things with square roots, because then you have to do rational exponents. Those can be a little bit trickier, I think. Those can, you know, just take your time with your fractions, basically. You know, the whole question is, how well do you remember how to do fractions and subtract and things like that? So common denominators, all that stuff. Remember I said at the beginning of this topic, this is the topic that ties everything together. Do you see why it does? Look, we've even got rational exponents and adding and subtracting fractions. We've got graphs. We've got everything going on. So maybe you feel like this. I hope not. Hopefully you feel a little bit better than that. Because, uh, yeah, these are totally doable. Although they look really ugly, you can completely do this.